Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today we are going to talk about PCR primers. PCR stands for the polymerase chain reaction, which we use in many uh, applications in the laboratory and primers can be of the two kinds. They can be RNA based or DNA based. In the laboratory we usually using DNA based primers because they cost about 10 times cheaper than RNA based primers, but RNA primers we can find in the living organism and uh, our polymerase using RNA primers to extend new strand of the DNA when, for example, cell undergoes replication cycle. But as I said, for certain applications in PCR we also can use RNA based primers. So basically primers are short complementary sequence to one strand of the DNA and to the other strand of the DNA and both strands of the DNA would be complementary to each other. That means that for example for primer 1 to be complementary for the strand of the DNA the sequence have to be the same as of this strand of the DNA and for primer number 2 in order to be complementary to this strand of the DNA, the sequence have to be the same as this sequence of the other strand of the DNA. This part, as you see, the sequence is the same. Of course, if we need certain fragment of the DNA in billions of copies, it doesn't mean that we have to start with just this fragment. Our fragment can be much bigger Take a look. For example, our DNA that we start can be this large, but we need only this fragment. That means that uh, in this case, we just have to design our primers that would be specific for this beginning of this fragment and this end of this fragment. In this case, we are going to make billions of copies of only this fragment and not of the whole, uh, say, chromosome or piece of the chromosome. By the way, using PCR technique, we cannot replicate the whole genome or whole chromosome because it only effective for thousands of the nucleotides or usually we use it between tens and hundreds of the nucleotides for one fragment, for one PCR product which we also call replicon. We can load our PCR cycle with much longer fragment, but the fragment that we are going to replicate we call replicon. Now let's talk about which primer we call forward primer and which reverse primer. If we want to replicate a piece of the gene, that means that piece of the gene have start position and stop position somewhere. And in this case we can say that one primer can be forward primer, another can be reverse primer. It depends on the position of the start and stop codon. In this case one strand of the DNA would be template strand of the DNA, another would be coding strand of the DNA. You might say that in PCR reaction every strand of the DNA would be template strand of the DNA for its primer. This is true, but on the overall, when we take a piece of the DNA, that piece comes from certain gene. So nevertheless, in this case, one strand would be called template strand of the DNA, another would be coding strand of the DNA. Why coding strand? Because if we for example, say that this is going to be template strand of the DNA. Let me demonstrate. In this case, for example, we are going to have 3 prime n here and 5 prime n here. And complementary strand of the DNA would have 3 prime n here and 5 prime n here. Now also says that somewhere here in the upstream region, we are going to have A, U, G, star codon. And this strand of the DNA is going to be coding strand of the DNA because it has the same sequence as messenger RNA. By the way, in this DNA strand 
we are not going to find Uracil, instead we are going to find Xymin. So in double stranded DNA we are going to find Xymin here. So the sequence is going to be A, T, G. We specify Tart Codon and also Mesionian. And in the template strand of the DNA, adenine base pair with thymine, thymine with adenine, and guanine with cytosine. So this is going to be complementary sequence to this one. And when messenger RNA would be produced, it is always produced from 5' end to 3' end. So it's going to be 5' end here, 3' end here. And as you see, this messenger RNA sequence is going to have here at the beginning the first codon, which is going to be A, U, G. And on the overall, the sequence of the messenger RNA is going to be the same as sequence of the coding strand of the DNA, with only one exception that whenever in this coding strand of the DNA we have thymine in messenger RNA, we are going to have uracil. And this is exactly why we call this strand of the DNA coding strand of the DNA. And another strand of the DNA we call template strand of the DNA. We also can call this strand of the DNA non-coding strand of the DNA. And this strand of the DNA which we call coding strand of the DNA, we also can say that this is non-template strand of the DNA. We also call this strand positive strand and this one negative strand. So as you see, so many names for two strands of the double-stranded DNA cause some confusion, but if you know the principle behind it, you can easily tell which strand is coding strand of the DNA, which is template, which is non-template, which is non-coding, which is positive, which is negative. More than that, we also call this strand of the DNA sense strand of the DNA, because it has sense, just like messenger RNA. And in this sense, we can call the strand of the DNA non-sense strand of the DNA. So as you see, eight different names for two strands of the DNA, but I hope after my explanation, it is now crystal clear for you which strand is which one. Now, which primer is forward primer and which is reverse primer. And when we use primer, for example, it goes here, and this primer would extend strand of the DNA, which is going to be the same sequence as messenger RNA. We say that this is going to be forward primer. So forward primer would make a new strand of the DNA that is coding strand of the DNA, that is sense strand of the DNA, that is positive strand of the DNA. So it makes sense to call such primer forward primer. And another one is going to be reverse primer. Those in PCR reaction, we do not produce messenger RNA, but nevertheless, one primer that goes in the uh, same direction as messenger RNA, we call forward primer, another reverse primer. But you may ask, what if our fragment of the DNA is not going to be a part of the gene? Let's say you just find certain fragment of the DNA which is outside of the gene, then which primer is going to be forward primer and which one is going to be reverse primer. In this case, there is no rule. You can call any primer you want, forward primer or reverse primer. In this case, it's just up to you which one you're going to call forward or reverse. In this case, this one can be forward and this reverse, or this reverse and this forward. Now let's talk about step number two, tag polymerase. Use these primers in order to extend new strand of the DNA. It cannot do its job without this piece of the DNA or RNA. In living organisms, another protein, another enzyme would synthesize these short oligonucleotides, which we call primase. 
Now a couple words about tag polymerase. This polymerase we got from archaea that lives in hot springs. Why this organism? Because this enzyme will not degrade in high temperatures like 100 degrees of Celsius, which is needed for PCR reaction and would live longer under these circumstances. Before scientists discovered this tag polymerase, they were using regular polymerase, but inconvenience was that they have to add new polymerase for each cycle. So as you see with regular polymerase and with 30 cycles, it was very time consuming and also cost money to uh, add new polymerase with each cycle, but with tag polymerase we can only add at the beginning of the cycle and they are not going to degrade during all this say 20-30 cycles. And the rest of the process is pretty simple, it just repeats itself. New strand of the DNA would be built, which is would be complementary to the old strand of the DNA and during rising of the temperature this strands of the DNA would separate and primers which we have in billions of copies at the beginning of the thermocycle would take their positions at the places to which they are complementary. And after certain number of cycles, which can be anywhere between 20 and 30, we even if we start with just few DNA fragments like this, we may end up with billions of copies, which we can load in the gel electrophoresis and we are going to get a band which we can see with our naked eye because we of course cannot see just a small fragment of the DNA, 1, 2, 3, 10 copies, but we would be able to see it with the use of special dye, for example, azidium bromide, uh, which glow under ultraviolet, we would be able to see billions of copies of the DNA as a band on the gel. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.